Hello there and welcome to this week's casual valuation. We have Alberts, a company that has shifted significantly when it comes to the public perception of it from being an environmentally friendly footwear and apparel company that could be the next big thing to a company that is questioned whether it can survive the next year or two. And that has been reflected in the share price. It's down more than 95% since November of 2021 when it became a public company. Now I'm valuing this company because it has been suggested many times by a subscriber. Luciano, I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name. Thank you for the suggestion and apologies that it took me a bit longer to dive a bit uh, deeper into the fundamentals of it. But of course I wouldn't be sharing my thoughts unless I've done a lot of analysis. Now let's get started. First of all, what is Allbirds? Well, it is an environmentally friendly footwear and apparel company. It is selling products online and through their 58 stores. And the number of stores, I mean, it's a fairly low number. It has grown over time, but it's, there's still a lot of potential if we compare it to the giants in this industry. So as such, it's still a young company. It's still one that it is expected to grow. And it's worth mentioning that the products that they're selling are primarily manufactured in Korea, Vietnam and Peru. So that also has um, basically it increases the risk of the company when it comes to the, their supply chain and manufacturing in case something goes wrong, of course, that would be that would have negative impact on Alberts. But this is not very uncommon. Majority of the companies in this industry outsource their manufacturing in countries similar to Korea, Vietnam, and Peru. We see, we've seen Bangladesh many times as well. So if we take a look at the historical financial performance, let's start with the revenue growth and the gross margin. So the revenue has grown 13% between 2019 and 2020, and then 27% between 2020 and 2021. And if you've seen any IPO in the past, every time that a company goes public, the most important thing is that they have solid financial performance to show for for the last years. And Alberts is no different in that respect. When they became a public company, they had enough that's the exciting growth behind them to attract investors. Now, what followed afterwards between 2021, 2022, the revenue has grown only 7%. So the growth is not as high as it was in the past. And not only that, the gross margin decreased and that is primarily due to certain inventory write-offs that they've had. And they have included that within that part of the income statement. Now, on the other side, this is a bit worrying. Their total operating expenses, so the selling general and administrative and the marketing expenses as percentage of revenue have grown. And that is a bit unusual. Yes, they have grown the number of stores, but as they scale up, as the more revenue that they get, they, these type of expenses should reduce as percentage of revenue, not increase. Um, and therefore, that leads me to, to one of the conclusions that I often get when I'm looking at public companies or companies that have just become public. IPO oftentimes stands for it's probably overpriced. So if you combine these two data points, of course, we see revenue growth. So it's, it's significant revenue growth, but the operating margin keeps decreasing from somewhere around negative 5% now to more than negative 30%. The difficult part is that it's any investor who is looking at this at the moment doesn't see a clear path to profitability. The company is currently losing roughly 100 million a year in cash. So it's difficult to, to imagine what are the next steps that the company can take to turn all of this around. Which leads to the main problem. If we take a look at the last quarter of 2022, and this is also, this had, is even I mean, since this was announced, the company, the share price is down more than 50%. In the fourth quarter, the revenue decreased by 13.4% compared to the fourth quarter of 2021. This is primarily attributable to a decrease in the number of orders and an estimated 3.2 million negative impact from the exchange rate. Now, the exchange rate, like these 3.2, even if they were not there, it still doesn't change the fact that the revenue decreased while they had more stores out there. So the demand for their products has significantly decreased. And then again, it begs the question, what can the management do to make sure that the company doesn't run out of cash and isn't on its way to bankruptcy? Now, to make it even worse, the guidance for the next quarter or for the 
first quarter of 2023, they expect a further increase of revenue, 20 to 28% compared to the first quarter of 2022, and losses of our adjusted EBITDA, so that's that excludes depreciation, amortization, and share-based compensation of almost 30 million. So Q4 2022 wasn't the only bad quarter for some reason. It is something that kind of indicates not only that their revenue growth is no longer there the way it was before, but it's going to be declining in the coming period. So the solution coming from the management is kind of divided in four key areas of focus. The first one is reignite product and brand by executing a highly focused brand strategy that reconnects with core customers. Now, this first part, I mean, I would expect that that's something that they regularly do. It's part of their research and development. They try to come up with exciting products. So I don't see anything special out there. The second one is optimize US stores and slow pace of openings, driving traffic and conversions to our US fleet and selectively expanding our third party wholesale channel. What this means is basically they're admitting that they made a mistake by growing fast in terms of number of stores that had impact on one side on the operating expenses, but it was not justified by the increase. In fact, it didn't even um, contribute to increased revenues uh, within, for example, this last year. So what they'll, what they'll likely do is maybe close some of the stores and they'll take a look at certain options to expand their offering through third-party wholesale channel, which means their gross margin would likely decline because, of course, these third-party wholesale channels will get a fee for that. Number three, evaluate transition of international go-to-market strategy. Now, international, they do have presence. It's not as impressive as in the US, but they are evaluating potential distributor partners in certain international markets to grow internationally at a cost and capital efficient manner. So again, instead of having their own stores, they'll try to sell these products through third party, um, which again has the same impact as, as the second point. And lastly, improve cost savings and capital efficiency, building upon and further accelerating 2022 cost and cash optimization in initiatives. I mean, I didn't see anything standing out in 2022, so I'm not sure what are they further accelerating. I mean, if anything, they're making that worse. Um, but basically, they want to save by reducing SGNA as percentage of revenue. And one way to do that is, of course, if they close certain stores. So that's something that can be expected. So losing 100 million roughly a year. If we take a look at the assets, they have 167 million in cash. That's as of the end of 2022. So if they continue with the same path, they have enough cash to survive the next year and a half. Of course, if they reduce the expenses, they can survive a bit longer. But that on its own doesn't make a company valuable. It's not about surviving. It's about becoming profitable and delivering returns to the shareholders. They have a fairly simple balance sheet. Other than the cash, of course, they have a lot of inventory, which means in the coming period, they don't need to spend a lot to acquire inventory, especially if they close stores. That inventory can be used to support the remaining stores or the online sales. So I don't expect significant increase in inventory in the coming period. So from a working capital point of view, that is something that they've already invested and now they can sell it and get more cash. So the cash equivalence of 167 million, that can likely, um, that's probably un underestimated in terms of how long the company can survive. And of course they have the, the property plan and equipment, but I mean, that's just a um, significant part of that is being leased. So if we take a look at the liabilities and equity, they don't have any debt other than leases. So they don't have any interest that is due um, in the next year or there's no principal repayment that they need to do. There is no debt. Now, if we take a look at their book value, the book value of equity is 317 million. Their market cap is 187 million. So hypothetically, if somebody buys all of Alberts and pays 187 million, what they get is, they get, if I go back to the previous slide, assets of 462 million comprising of cash that's pretty much close to the market cap and almost no debt other than, of course, capital leases, but that is still significant. So you get 317 million. Now, on first glance, it might seem that it's a good deal. It's below book value, 
But there are a couple of things that we need to mention. The first part is if you acquire 116 million of inventory, you cannot sell them right away for 116 million. The value, if sold in bulk, would be much lower and likely it would result to certain impairments. The second part is at the moment, the public looks at this company and says, hey, the management is confident in their abilities that they can turn this around, which means next year they're still not going to be profitable, as that's what I expected also by the management, but they're going to be burning 50, 100 million in cash, which means next year the book value, instead of being 317 million, would be much lower and the market cap, well, we'll see how, what, that, what happens with that. But in fact, they're... In, in pricing the company, the future losses are also being taken into account and especially the, the, the rate uh, by which the cash is being burned. Let's take a look at certain competitors and let's take a look at where they stand. So what I did was for Alberts, I took the revenue that's most recent, so almost 300 million. I took the gross margin that's kind of an average of the last five years. And I did the same for the operating margin because at the moment, the operating margin is extremely... Um, low, it's minus more than 30%, but it's also at a point when kind of they're trying to change a bit and, and cut losses or close certain stores. So assuming that they have kind of the average loss of so the last five years, that's somewhere around 15%. Take a look at Nike. Take a look at Adidas, Puma, Skechers. All of these have similar gross margins. So from a pricing point of view, Alberts is at the same level. So they can charge similar prices. They are They have kind of premium brands. The problem is that they cannot move enough volume to cover their operating expenses. So the demand for their products isn't as high as it is for Nike and Adidas and Puma and Skechers and all of these other big names. But let's for a moment assume, and I'm, this is a stretch, but let's assume that at some point the management of Alberts will do a great job and they can turn this around. Well, what can we expect? I would say at a best case scenario, the operating margin would be somewhere around 7%, same as Adidas, Puma, and Skechers. I wouldn't push it as far as Nike, but for a moment, let's imagine that the company doesn't go bankrupt because, well, if we assume that it's going bankrupt, the valuation, there is no point in, in, in valuing the company and the share price will continue to decline. But let's assume for a moment that the company can turn this around. And let's assume that over time, they can bring the operating margin to 7% and eventually they start kind of recovering their revenue. So even though for next year, the forecast is somewhere around minus 15% and also operating margin, I don't expect that they make all the changes within a year. But let's see how this has an impact or what is the impact on the valuation if we use these assumptions. So I'm using a discount rate of 11% and then 9.3% in year 10 as the company again becomes... Um, more mature and more secure. If that is the case, the revenue grows 73% in the next 10 years. So it slowly recovers. Again, I don't expect that they start recovering 20, 30, 40%, which could happen, but I'm just trying to be conservative in that sense, but I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt when it comes to the margin that at some point they actually get to profitability and they get to the 7% operating margin. Now, of course, there's taxes, there's additional reinvestment. And what you'll notice here is there's a minus, which means a bit, which seems a bit odd, but actually what I'm referring there is that they won't need to invest as much in the first year because they have a lot of inventory still there. They can use that to um, basically bring the revenue for the first year because they don't need to reinvest a lot more in inventory. But over time, they would need to do so. And if they reduce the number of stores, I don't expect them to lose 100 million a year. As you can see, the free cash flow is somewhere around 50 million. So they have enough cash to kind of survive. But if they need additional loans, they're in a position that they can get some uh, from a point that they don't have any um, debt at this moment. But still, unless they become profitable, the interest rates offered on that debt will be relatively high. So if this is what happens, what you'll notice is that over the next five, six years, the company doesn't generate positive free cash flows. In fact, the present value of the cash flows over the next 10 years is negative 116 million. But the value comes at year 10 when they're actually becoming profitable and they show that uh, they've turned everything around. Now they have a business that is valuable. But if we take all of this into account, the value of the business at the moment is 40 million, which is 
much lower than, of course, today, but we have to still adjust for the cash that they have in hand and the debt. But it just seems a big stretch from where it used to be at the IPO point. So if we adjust for the cash, if we adjust for debt and the equity options, basically we get to the value of equity being 89 million or $0.6 per share, which is half of where the company is trading today. And that is again, assuming that they can turn this around, they can become profitable and they can have the same margins as some big names in this industry. Now, of course I could be wrong. So let's take a look at the valuation and basically what they need to do to be fairly valued today, so at $1.2, $1.3 a share, they would need to get to operating margin or operating profit of 11%, which is not an easy task to do. Uh, it's not impossible, but the chances of that happening, in my opinion, are fairly low, especially when at the moment they're struggling we even to keep up with the revenue. They're, they're, they have revenue decline. But there, there's one thing that I like to point out. Take a look at the valuation at 5% revenue, uh, at 5% operating margin and at 7%. The more they grow, the valuation per share decreases. And what is the reason behind that? Well, the reason behind that is if they are earning 5% of operating margin, they need to invest capital in working capital, so to have inventory. But all of these expenses and all of these further investments that they need to make do not support the 5% operating margin. So the reinvestments that they need to do just doesn't, don't pay off. Basically, for the company to be at a point when every additional dollar in revenue adds value, they need to have a margin above 7 or 8%, which is on its own a very difficult task. Um, especially again comparing where the competitors are. So in my opinion, I, I mean, first of all, I would not be investing in Alberts. Uh, it's way too risky. If they manage to turn it around, which means if they manage to cut expenses significantly over the next two years, and they turn from um, a revenue declining company to one that grows 20, 30% through third party distributors, then we have a completely different model because then uh, of course, we don't have that many stores, so the operating expenses to some extent decrease, but the gross margin would also decrease as, again, these third-party distributors would get a percentage for every piece of apparel or footwear that is being sold. So that would be all regarding this video. I hope it wasn't too long. Please do let me know what you think of it. And I've added uh, animations or transitions. I'm not sure how they're being called in PowerPoint for the first time. Let me know if, they, if you find them annoying. I'll just uh, make sure that they are not there for the next video. Thank you for following until the very end. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.